Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and we're going to continue looking at negative externalities of production, but looking at solutions. How do we solve the overallocation of resources to the production consumption of some type of negative uh, good or service? So the first solution that we're going to look at is a Pagovian tax, named after economist, author Cecile Pagot, who was the first, I believe, to um, propose using taxes as a means to correct a negative externality. We know that taxes have the effect of raising costs to firms, reducing supply, raising price to reduce the quantity demanded, and that the idea would be to um, reach the optimal quantity. So let's go ahead and, and graph and analyze that. We're gonna use the same example, market for electricity generated by coal, burning of coal, um, leading to carbon emissions, leading to social costs to society, such as climate change, uh, negative impacts on the environment, ecosystems, and human health. So first, let's practice graphing it. We have the price, perhaps, of each kilowatt of electricity generated. That price represented on the y-axis, which is our independent variable. And then we have the quantity of electricity generated um, on the x-axis. We have the supply of electricity provided by these power stations. And we're gonna label that S1 is equal to, we know it's marginal cost, but we're gonna be more specific because we're looking at the free market. We're looking at uh, this market before the government intervenes. And so we'll label that the marginal private cost of production. Power stations will employ resources, um, labor, coal, other resources, and those resources are you know, to a degree, the private property of that firm. Employees will sign a contract that would, you know, obligate them to only work for this firm uh, until they uh, discontinue those contracts. So labor and, uh, and other resources, kind of the private property of, of the firm. So we'll label that the marginal private costs of production. Then we have our demand curve, downward sloping according to the law of demand, and that's equal to our marginal benefit, but we'll label that as the marginal private benefit because for households that consume the electricity, it's for their own private benefit, their own private use. Um, and then the equilibrium of the two, where S1 equals D1, provides the equilibrium price in the free market and the equilibrium quantity in the free market. And instead of labeling it PE, I'm going to emphasize that it's the free market price so I'll label it PM. And instead of labeling it QE, I will label it QM to emphasize this is the free market quantity, where quantity supplied is equal to quantity demanded. All right, so that will be, let's say, point A. In the previous video, we talked about how um, carbon emissions is being externalized to society. The coal-fired power station is not paying for the use of the, of the atmosphere. The atmosphere is a common access resource no one owns it, um, and as a result, these firms are getting away with externalizing their carbon emissions into the atmosphere, and then thus it leads to negative impacts on the climate, on human health, and so on. So we can represent that social cost, the impact, the negative costly impacts of climate change, etc., through this curve. This curve being S2, which is equal to the marginal social costs of production. So we know that with a negative externality of production that in the free market quantity at QM, the marginal social cost is greater than the marginal social benefit. So the demand curve or households, there is no uh, problem being generated by the household when they consume electricity. That is the assumption here. So we're gonna state that the demand is equal to the marginal private benefit, which is equal to the marginal social benefit because Households are not uh, creating any type of external impact on society when they consume that electricity. That's just an assumption we're going to make. And at QM, we can just go straight up, right? At QM, we go straight up, and we're going to see that, yes, right, at this point, at point B, we can see that the marginal social cost is greater than I'll label that point B, greater than the marginal social benefit at point A, all right? Emphasizing this. 
at QM, the marginal social cost of production is greater than the marginal social benefit. So that generates a welfare loss. And that welfare loss is the shaded area right here. Okay, that loss representing the the uh, the damage done to society in, in terms of climate change, um, carbon emissions in an urban area impacting human health, rising lung disease problems, and so on. So where is social optimum? So social, social optimum is achieved, or allocative efficiency would be achieved, where marginal social cost equals marginal social benefit. So where S two equals D one. It provides the social optimum price of PM, I'm sorry, P opt, the optimal price. And it's optimal because at P opt, it would be equal to both the sum of the private costs of production through the firm and also equal to the social costs of those carbon emissions to society. So it's the true price or the true cost of generating electricity through coal. And that will also uh, lead to the optimal quantity. So we'll label that Q opt. Okay. So right now, society it is at QM. We're operating in the free market. But we notice that the social cost of carbon emissions is leading to severe problems. And thus, we have an idea that we would like less of that type of production. And we would like to produce... Um, where MSC equals MSB, where we have price equal to private cost and social cost, and we're achieving uh, less production and consumption, all right, which would be at point C. So that's a little bit of review from the previous video. Great. So now let's look at the solution. The solution, the first solution is a Pagovian tax. We've learned about indirect taxes, and now we're going to use indirect taxes as a means to achieve the socially optimal quantity. Pagovian tax, we're going to apply a tax on each unit of output. So for perhaps for each kilowatt of electricity that's generated, there's an additional tax applied. And the value of the tax ideally would be the value of the social cost. So economists, perhaps with environmentalists and so forth, will try to quantify what is the value of that um, social cost to society so that we can apply a tax to each output produced to reduce um, the quantity to the desired level, all right? So the tax is on the output, each kilowatt that's generated. It's not on the carbon emissions. We're charging the firm for each kilowatt of output. Just want to emphasize this because we're going to see in the second solution with carbon emissions, the focus is on the carbon. So we know that a per unit tax causes the supply curve to shift inward. We can also say it shifts upward by the amount of the tax. Both are fine to state. And uh, we know that a tax raises the price for the consumer and lowers the price received by the producer. So we can start to label our graph to highlight the impact of the tax. So MPC shifts in S1 to S2, so S2 is equal to the marginal social cost, which is equal to the marginal private costs plus the tax. You can also state that it's equal to S1 plus tax. That's fine as well. I prefer that you uh, state MPC plus tax. Price rises for the consumer from PM to P opt, so that's the price paid by the consumer and then the price paid by the consumer subtract the tax. That's what the firm is left with. So we have an additional label to provide, which is right here. All right, the price received by the producer. And we are done labeling. Um, just to emphasize, here we can see the tax revenue that's now being collected by the government with the application of this Pogovian tax on the quantity of output. And that tax revenue would be used to um, cover the damage being done by the coal that's being emitted or the carbon that's being emitted into the atmosphere. If people are getting sick through ble breathing in those, uh, breathing in the carbon, they go to a public hospital, taxpayers are paying for their treatment, 
But with the tax revenue generated, the government can collect that money and then reallocate it towards their public health services or reallocate towards um, you know, planting more trees to absorb carbon out of the atmosphere, et cetera. Okay, so that's how we would draw um, this solution. Now let's go ahead and analyze it as we would for a IB paper exam. So as can be seen, we have graph A, which is the market for electricity generated by coal-fired power stations. We have a downward sloping demand curve, labeled D1, which is equal to the marginal private benefit, which is equal to the marginal social benefit of households consuming electricity. We have two upward sloping supply curves according to the law of supply, labeled S1, which is equal to our marginal private costs of producing electricity, and S2, which is equal to our marginal social cost. Where S1 equals D1, it provides an equilibrium at point A with an equilibrium price in the free market at PM, an equilibrium quantity in the free market at QM. And we notice that at QM, the marginal social costs of production is greater than the marginal social benefit, generating a welfare loss, which is the shaded area here. The welfare loss is represented through the negative impacts of carbon being admit emitted through this production process, leading to climate change, negative impacts on the environment, ecosystems, and human health. Social optimum would be achieved where MSC equals MSB at point C, providing the optimal price. At P opt, um, it would uh, be equal to the private and social cost of production, so it would be the true cost of production, and we would achieve the optimal quantity of Q opt. All right thus um, addressing and uh, alleviating the negative externality and achieving allocative efficiency. So how is that achieved? One solution is an indirect tax, a market-based policy of applying an indirect tax or a Pagovian tax on the firm and we're taxing their output. For each unit or each kilowatt of electricity that's generated through the burning of coal, they must pay an additional tax. This changes the behavior and the incentives of the firm in which they will reduce their supply because they have to pay that additional cost. That will uh, cause the supply curve to shift in from S1 to S2, S2 equal to MSC, which is equal to the marginal private cost plus the tax. We can also say it's equal to S1 plus the tax. The tax has the effect of raising the price for consumers from PM to PC, which is equal to the optimal price, and has the effect of reducing the price received by the producer uh, from PM to PP. Because of the higher price, because of price rising, we see that the quantity demanded decreases from point A to point C or from QM to Q opt. Thus, the Pagovian tax is effective in eliminating the welfare loss and the overallocation of resources to the production and consumption of electricity through the burning of coal and achieving allocative efficiency at point C where MSC is equal to MSB. Okay, so uh, that's it. In the information section of this video, I'll have an outline of the analysis of this. And in the next video, we'll look at the second solution of applying a carbon tax. If you have any questions, feel free to comment and don't forget to subscribe and to like. Thank you so much.